My name is Kelvin Lee. I'm the uh, Jacobs Family Chair of the Department of Immunology and the Senior Vice President of Basic Sciences at the Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center. The COVID vaccines have in fact been a revolution in the, the production and manufacture of vaccines. So the flu vaccine is a traditional vaccine where we take the influenza and we grow it in such a way, in chicken eggs, for example, that it makes it so that it can't divide anymore. So it's that neutralized uh, virus that alerts the immune system to the presence of the virus, but actually can't do any damage on its own. These new vaccines are actually much more, uh, there's much more molecular biology involved. And which is why, you know, typically it takes about five years to develop a vaccine. And the two leading vaccines vaccine candidates, the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine, were developed within six months. Uh, and they used revolutionary new technology that uh, involved a novel way to actually introduce the virus, not as an actual viral particle, not as an actual virus, but as a piece of uh, RNA uh, that actually codes for the virus. So it's actually the recipe for a virus, but it's not the virus itself. It turns out it's a lot easier to make the recipe for a virus. And that's encapsulated into something that can deliver it into, into, into cells and activate the immune response. So none of the COVID vaccines are live vaccines. They are all either one or two molecules out of the entire virus, uh, or they are a piece of the virus, uh, uh, one or two genes that have been put into another virus that actually just causes the common cold and has been inactivated. You can't get COVID from getting, uh, from getting vaccinated. As far as we can tell, the COVID vaccine is safe. Based on the phase one, phase two, and phase three studies, there have been again, and thousands of people that have been vaccinated. The side effect profile looks very much like a regular other vaccine. So the flu vaccine, measles, mumps, uh, the side effect profile looks the same. Uh, so people will get, uh, you know, low grade fever, muscle aches, uh, you know, typically after the booster, uh, when they get the second shot. And that again is sign that the immune system is working. Now for all vaccines, you know, whether or not they be the COVID vaccine or the childhood vaccines that you got when you were a kid, we can't ever say that anything is completely safe. Water isn't even completely safe. Uh, but we can say that again, the COVID-19 uh, vaccines that we have gone through phase three testing seem to have a very safe profile that is similar to the other vaccines that we all got when we were kids. Both the uh, Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are new vaccine technology. Uh, and so, and that allowed for the vaccine to be developed very quickly. As with all new technology, there are always wrinkles to be worked out. Now, I think that the whole production capability is being very closely monitored by, monitored by the FDA and regulatory agencies. And again, Pfizer is a big pharmaceutical company. They have lots of experience in making drugs that are safe and effective in patients. So I have good confidence that between the, man, the pharmaceutical company's manufacturing capabilities and expertise and experience, as well as the FDA's close monitoring of how these uh, vaccines are produced, that we will get safe vaccines uh, for, for use. The idea for vaccines is to prevent you from getting infected and also prevent you from infecting other people. So the idea of the vaccine is that it is in the front part of the whole infectious process. And so in that sense, because the disease is less active, uh, the side effects will be less. The treatment for people with active COVID, uh, so remdesivir and the antibody therapies that are used in people with active therapy, there are more side effects, but mostly because those patients are sicker. Uh, they've already gotten infected. They've already had the virus damage their body. So the side effects of that treatment uh, are, tend to be a little bit harsher, but that is a different patient population than who we are trying to protect with the vaccine.
So the short answer is eventually. The longer answer is the way that it's being rolled out is that it, because, again, it is an emergency use authorization, it's important to remember that the first thing that the FDA is going to do is not say it's safe for everybody. They're going to say it is safe for people that are at highest risk to either get infected or suffer from the infection. And things are so dire that we are going to approve these vaccines for those people first. And that is what is mean by the emergency use authorization. And how broad or narrow that EUA is, we'll find out on December 10th, when uh, the Pfizer vaccine goes up uh, in front of the FDA first. Now, how the vaccine does under its EUA authorization, how it does in that first group of people that get vaccinated, it's gonna be followed very, very closely by both Pfizer, Moderna, the drug companies, and the FDA. And based on the safety profile and the performance characteristics of the vaccine in that population, the FDA will now start to make a decision as to whether or not it should be more broadly approved for everybody to get it. So the way that the vaccine is gonna get rolled out is it's not gonna get rolled out that everybody gets the vaccine starting at the end of December. It's gonna be rolled out in the high-risk groups first and then based on safety and performance characteristics, other groups will then get approved to get it until we get to the point where it's generally available for the entire population. So because it's being tiered, the production can ramp up to meet those, those groups that get added on. So I think that, uh, that the companies will be able to, to manufacture vaccine as we ramp up who gets vaccinated they'll be able to keep up with that. There are things that we just, nobody can anticipate in the ramp up process. And then obviously there are issues as COVID-19 in the general population gets worse, there are going to be issues with supply chain shortages and other pieces that need to come in to make the vaccine that may be uh, in fact crippled or, or, or hindered by the ongoing COVID uh, epidemic, which is why people need to continue to be vigilant about uh, not getting COVID. They need to socially distance, they need to wear their masks, they need to wash their hands, they need to remember that, you know, just because the vaccine is there, it's not gonna be available for the general public for months. So we have to be careful. Otherwise, we're just gonna hinder even our ability to make vaccine if this epidemic gets worse. All the side effects are being very closely monitored by, uh, by the state of New York, by the FDA, by the CDC, and there are formal reporting uh, mechanisms for everybody that's getting side effects. So if you get a bad side effect, you should contact your healthcare provider or whoever gave you the vaccine because they are mandated to follow and report all those side effects because one of the things that's critical for us to understand is as we give the vaccine to more and more people, what does the side effect profile look like? Uh, you know, as we vaccinate, you know, hundreds of thousands to millions of people, what side effects are we looking at? And there is a very formal reporting mechanism that is being shared nationally uh, and that all the states are doing to follow this very closely. So contact the healthcare provider that actually gave you the vaccine and they will report it to both the state and the federal government.